All right guys, so this is a, I don't want to call it unofficial, but I don't have a media guy this week because I think we overworked him at Florida 2K. <laughs> so he got sick and decided to take the week off, which is fine. Uh, so I have my little like DJI little tiny camera up on a shelf right now with no microphone, even though I just got a new microphone. I'm not, I've got none because he's got them at his house right now. It's okay. We're yeah. just going to make this happen. It'll work. Oh, yeah. So, and yeah, probably somebody's going to come through the door and the air compressor might kick on. So we're just going to speak loudly and, uh, and have a little chat about the R8 turbos. Because I want to put something out today because there was actually definitely a noticeable difference in those turbos. And we, we talked about it last week. We talked about putting the new turbos on from Zona Rotor. They're 72 millimeters or the 76 from Precision. Once again, no slight on precision those servos worked great for the time that we had them on it we still have them on other cars lots that of them working well yep so. lots of them on other cars we have them on the sto um tony's car has his on the there and then a lot of other the stock motor cars so no slight there whatsoever precision we love you there's there's no issues there but greg from zona rotor is a good friend he's come to the shop a couple of times and he wanted to try something out and we wanted to give him the shot so uh, and we were excited to work with them because uh, you know they're just a cool company, uh, and uh, it definitely livened the car up a little bit. So uh, let's just talk about some stats uh, once again. Like that's a 72 millimeter inducer uh, turbo with a 69 millimeter exducer on the hot side. Um, the the 76 75 is just that. It's a 76 millimeter inducer and a 75 millimeter exducer on the turbine. Um, the turbine on the Zona Rotor. Uh, is definitely uh, extremely efficient and we've, we found that out by by turning it up and realizing that uh, you know that the drive pressure wasn't hindering the car quite as much um, I will just go on record and say I do not have drive pressure sensors in the car we did not have time to do that I wanted to do that and I also wanted to do uh, uh, wheel speed sensors but we didn't have time to do that so this data is very purely based on boost for boost how fast did the car go yeah and where quit making that Right, and we did get to the point where we found where it quit making power. Yeah, seems like it. So um, Taylor's obviously, you guys all know Taylor, he's the man behind the keys here, and um, and he probably knows a little bit more in depth. I mean, I, I know exactly what boost we were at and how much mile an hour we picked up, but I'll, I'll turn it over to him. So I would say probably the comparison would be Bristol to here, correct? Yeah, I think so. Because yeah. half mile stuff, we didn't do a half mile. Right, but quarter mile we did, uh, I mean, what did we do, six or seven, seven second passes in Bristol from, you know, 30 pounds of boost to 34 pounds of boost to where it didn't do anything. And on the 76s, that is 780 at 190. I think our best trap was 190 miles an hour, and we did it very consistently from 189. Say hi, Ricky, you're on YouTube. Okay. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, I mean, it seemed like we were stuck at that 190 level. Um, you know, Bristol's a little higher elevation track, but the air was good for August. Uh, Bradenton is a low elevation track, but FL2K is hot. Sunday wasn't too bad, but right. I mean, I feel like we have pretty definitive uh, 76, 75 results on our car with our engine. Yeah, and so the 76, 75s in Bristol, we turned those things from. 28 to 34 pounds basically anything over 32 pounds yeah just it hit a cap that's where the drive pressure was was just unhappy and making the car not go any faster um, from 30 to 32 there was a small gain from 32 to 34 there was no gain i think we even tried 36 pounds that might have been at the half mile the car got slower you know didn't get hurt got slower yeah. turned it back down gained our mile an hour back right i mean that was the limit yeah, definitive, very definitive. And that was 189 to 190 miles an hour in the quarter. Yep. Um, and then in the draggy, uh, which I will just go ahead and pull up right now so that I'm not talking out of my you know what. Um, you know, we, we got 61, 30 times. That has a lot to do with traction, but 100 to 150 times, they're a little bit more like. Especially hey, at the track. Right. You know, like 100 to 150, it's, it's hooked up. Yeah, that's a power that's a power situation so uh what was the dates in uh in bristol uh first part of august 
Maybe like the... Yeah, 11. Okay. Right? No, that would have... that? Yep, yeah, that would have been the half mile. So the so fifth. Fourth, fifth, something like yeah, that. Yeah, fourth, fifth. Okay, so 100 to 150 times ranged from 225, 224, 224, 235, 245. That's when we turned it up, and it actually mm -hmm. went slower, I'm sure. Yep. Um, so in the mid two twos. We've two been to one at a best, I think, in Texas. A two one something. Okay, so 76, right. 75s, a two one, uh, high two one. Yep. Uh, would be at best uh, 100 to 150 yep. um, and two two mid two twos is about what we were running in Bristol kind of this last time out so um, okay so let's talk about you know the testing we did on the the new 72s so as if you guys follow as you guys know we had some electrical gremlins um, go on in Florida um, we ended up working those out. Electrical things are absolutely a pain in the butt. Ended up being um, a wire that was folded that we you know had to find, and then it took out a Motec adapter box, and what a mess! What a mess! Um, but after not letting the car beat us, we did figure it out and got out there and actually ran some some times. So okay, so what we did is we did a 34, 32 pound pass and a 34 pound pass. Did we do that? Um, on yes, yes we did. John drove it for the first, for the first pass. Okay, so thirty-two pound pass. Jan drove it. We also yeah. do. Uh, we have some data from roll racing for thirty-two pounds as well. Okay, so so, so yeah. yeah, and I've got sixty to one thirty data or hundred to one hundred fifty data on yep. the thirty-two pounds. So on the thirty-two yep. pound pass, the roll racing side of things, we were, and I'll just just so I'm not talking out of my again. Um, Roll racing, we went 218, 100 to 150 on 32 pounds. Yep, that's yep. right. Okay, and then at the drag racing, I think he went 190, 189. Yep, 189, some change. Yep. Right, on 32 yep. pounds of boost. Yep. Um, and, and please understand, boost isn't the only variable to this, right? But this is with all the other variables the same. Yeah. So we're not adjusting timing, we're not adjusting fueling, we're not, you know, the other variables are the same. Everybody says to me, Oh, you know, how much do you think it'll make on this much boost? Well, I don't know. It depends on what your timing curve looks like. It depends on what your fueling looks like. Like there's a whole bunch of other aspects to this situation other than just boost. Yeah, we ran the same ignition timing on those two boost levels. We ran the same fueling. I mean, the same, you know, boost ramp and not so much of a ramp on the built engine. So, I mean, the boost is pretty much the variable. Right. So Air maybe a little, but from Saturday morning to, you know, Sunday evening, it was Pretty similar. I think we, I mean, we have the density altitude stuff in there. Right. It's yeah. Not, not too drastically different. Yeah. Uh, we won't get dig into the DA too, too much just because I don't want to, I don't want to make this video too, too long. So anyway, so then we turned the car up to 34 pounds and the drag racing, which is where we ran our 750, yep. uh, 753 and 196. 6.9. Six, so almost 197. Yep. So there you go. So just right there without doing 100 to 150 data. That's seven mile an hour. Yeah. Six to seven mile an hour. Huge. At the same boost. Okay. In arguably worse air. Maybe similar, but there's a possibility it was a little bit worse air. Comparing to Bristol. Yeah. 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 Because, I mean, Florida's Florida. You mm -hmm. know, we love Florida, but, uh, you know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yes, exactly. So that pass was 197 miles an hour, high 196. We'll get, get real. 196.9. I figured we picked up a solid six and a half to seven miles an hour at the same boost on a smaller turbo. And we backed it up with a 195 and some change, you know, pretty quickly afterwards. Right. You know? Which interestingly enough, we turned up. We did. We turned it up a pound of boost. We it turned it up slower. and it got slower. It got slower 100 to 150 and it got slower in the ha or in the quarter. Yeah. Um, so uh, we found the edge of those turbos, in my opinion, because it was literally 45 minutes later, an hour later. Yeah. I um, believe it was, I believe we ran the same thing that we ran to when we turned up the other turbos. Yeah. Yep. Just ran out of efficiency for, yeah. for that engine. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Arguably in, and in a little bit better air because it was getting into the evening, the, the higher boost level, uh, be above 35 pounds or 34 pounds mm -hmm. actually uh, hit a wall. Yeah. So, so the, the 34 pound run went 193, 100 to 150, which I haven't published this yet online. I'm pretty excited to set, share the video. Um, it went 19300 150 versus 
uh, we'll call it a 2.2 two at the same boost on the other turbos. That may not sound like a lot. I don't know, you know, I don't know how, you know, the viewers who's listening or who's watching this. Uh, if, you, if you're not out there and you don't drag your car a bunch, at this level, at the 2.2 two level, to go two nine or one nine three is <laughs> hundreds of horsepower. A lot of power. Mm. It's a lot of difference in power. And to go from one ninety to one ninety seven isn't fifty wheel. Yeah. It's like yeah, two hundred for sure. <laughs> horsepower. So like, you know, exponentially as you get faster, it gets harder and harder to go faster. Um, that's just how that works. So um yeah, this isn't like a fifty wheel difference. Fifty wheel horsepower difference. We're talking about hundreds of horsepower as Taylor just said. And then when we turned the turbos up to back it up, the car went slower. It went 195. 195 and some change, yeah. And okay, so it two, lost a mile and a half. Then back to a 2.0 or 2.1? Yeah, 2.0. 2.0. Yeah, yeah well, actually a 2.0. 2.0. So that yeah, started to lose a yeah, little bit. Yeah, seven hundredths yep. slower and a mile and a half an hour slower in the quarter. So, um, yeah, so, I mean, lots of good data there i don't know you know if you're interested in building a car with those turbos i will say that they also come up faster they come up very fast especially on the street you definitely see it in the data on launch controls where i really see it from the 76s which i never felt like they were leggy on a you know v10 engine but after seeing hearing your car come down on launch counting the amount of seconds it takes to you know step down to target torque after coming out it, it's like feels like we're working with 64s again. I yeah. mean, not quite, but yeah, it's uh, it's impressive. I will say on the street, they are they come up a little, like come up quicker, they feel more linear, they feel way more linear than the 64 does. The 64 almost feels violent. It comes in so hard, yeah. Um, and then the, uh, you know, the 76s were very livable. There was yeah. nothing wrong with that. brake boost was pretty good in third. You could get them going by 60, you know, I mean, it was not hard to drive, but these seem like a no compromise. Yeah, these things are right in the middle. They light when you want them to light, and they don't feel violent when they come in like the 64s did. Um, not that that's a bad thing. That's a cool feeling. But the, the middle of the road for the tire and the shock of the tire and how linear it is, is, is it's really just a nice turbo. Um, so, yeah, we're excited about it. So our the, the answer to the question last week, as much as most of you guys probably won't like to hear it, is that size does not matter. <laughs> it actually doesn't matter. Um, smaller can be faster. Um, and we won't dig too far into that. So, okay. I'm going to edit this myself, so I'm very sorry about what's about to happen and be published on our YouTube because um, I got to get this out today because it's Friday and I want to publish this. Um, any other interesting data or anything you want to share? Uh, one note is if anyone says, well, the dyno could have told you that. You could have just turned it up on the dyno. Uh, a couple things to mention. We have a dyno jet. Love that dyno. It's great. Day-to-day -day use is awesome. But at 2,000-ish horsepower stuff, there's inconsistencies with traction. This is the biggest one. I mean, we start to spin all four wheels on those cars. I think we turned this thing up to 1,750 wheel. And I was like, let's do the rest of the track. You know, that'll tell us. Also. Even if we picked up power, let's say from 34 to 35, 36 pounds on the dyno, if we could get it to hook and ice the car and have back-to-back -back everything be the same, it's one gear. You run it for six and a half gears down the track, you might have more power for one gear. You know, you might upset the car after four or five mm -hmm. gears. So the dyno for us, being a dyno jet, being you know a single gear pull, it's a tuning tool. It gets us close. The track, this type of data is is really where we you know find the limit or find you know, the value in, in more boost, less boost, changing ignition timing, stuff like that. So um, real world data is always worth more than the dyno. Yeah, absolutely. We get, I get that question a lot as well because there's a lot of guys out there, you know, Tony from T1, uh, um, you know, the guys out of uh, Auto Trans, they all have hub dynos, you know, and they make, you know, but I, we don't have that, we know, and these tires, these cars do spin. People are like, oh, why don't you put up more 23, 2400 horsepower grass? Because there's no way we could ever do that. Do it on <laughs> it's impossible. The thing would just shred the tires off the freaking car before that would happen. So yeah, that's a, yeah. that's a good point. So anyway, all right. I'm sorry if the sound isn't wonderful. I'm sorry about any background noise. Um, I'm not sorry for Ricky walking through because you know, I mean, he's a nice guy. Um, We'll get this published up. And if you guys have any questions, any comments, please leave them. We're happy to answer them. Hit us up on Instagram, Facebook, uh, email us, whatever, or, or comment uh, in, the, in the YouTube where we love answering questions about this kind of stuff. We love technical data. We don't ever get enough of it. 
but we, we absolutely love it. So, all right, see y'all for now.